everybody, this is Alyssa from Mink Arts and Crafts, and today we are doing my favorite video of all time. Uh, typically, I love doing these month in reviews, and today we are doing the month in review for the month of June. And June was actually, surprisingly enough, a very productive month for me. I got a ton of paintings done, uh, so many different finishes, and I was surprised at how much I actually got done this month. So we're going to kind of get into it, and we're going to take a look at what I got done. We're going to start with a couple of the small canvases, and then we're going to roll into the larger finishes. So uh, we will start with these little ones. So first up, I have three small, uh, kind of tiny, uh, partial, or not partial, but three small, uh, what I call mini canvases that I finished. Uh, and all three of these little mini canvases come to us from Fallon Gems. I know I had shown some other ones uh, earlier uh, of the mini canvas finishes. Uh, so, the, and then the, which two of which were, or all three of which were double-sided adhesive. And these ones are uh, definitely better than those ones. Uh, I think I had a random drill that was just kind of like ride along for the ride apparently. Um, so these ones were not, these ones were poured glue. They ended up being 20 by 20. Uh, and I have one round and two squares here. So this one is a camera or camera one. I think it is a 20 by 20. There were 21 colors, uh, poured glue. I started this one on the 11th of June, finished it on the 11th of June. It took me three hours and 35 minutes. It was my 13th mini canvas. I labeled these all as like mini canvases. Um, and as you can see, I noticed with these ones, I don't know if it was that, I have a little hair on there. I don't know if it was because the, um, the, um, uh, cause I know talking to Crimson, she had been working on the canvases to try to have the, cause these are the basic, like the cheaper line, not her, um, luxury line. I don't have any of the luxury ones yet. These are the, just the basic line like as you can see these are the acrylic uh, rounds but if you notice we're not seeing nearly as many of the like there I'm really not seeing any of the guide circles on this one whereas with the double sided adhesive ones that I had worked on before we saw all the guide circles so I was extremely pleased with this there were very very few like guide circles that I could see like there's one or two here and there that are visible but overall I was very pleased with this and that slight increase in size from a 15 by 15 to a 20 by 20 actually really helped with like the rendering where it really comes through well and uh, like I love this I think this is an adorable little image a super cute and I was extremely um, like much much happier with how these this one turned out than the previous around um that I had done I uh, still have a lot of confetti uh throughout the entirety of it and you can kind of see all of those different color changes but uh definitely much happier because before I was like ah, I'm not gonna do any more rounds now looking at this I'm like okay yeah I'll totally do more rounds of this if they end up looking like this so pleased with that so that was the first of these mini kits that I did uh and then I had uh, this one which is a square this was also a 20 by 20 this is the corgi um it has 24 colors I started this one on the 11th of June finished it on the 11th of June it took me three hours and 35 minutes and uh, uh, it is also the cheaper version which is not the luxury kit because it's the just the basic uh, kit so it has the acrylic squares if you get the luxury version you do get the resin squares um, so this one as you can see there is a some gapping in the uh, the really light uh, colors I'm also not a perfect square placer um, the drills like again placed much better than the uh, placement on the um, double sided oh I placed the wrong color there then on the previous one which was double sided adhesive but if you look you can see this placement looks really good there's only a couple spots here and there where we see some of the gapping but overall it looks significantly better than the previous uh, round of on uh, these mini canvases did so I am a uh, much happier with this um still a little bit of gapping but very very much improved uh like I feel like I could actually fill some of this in with some um mica powder right around the white right in here to fill in a little bit of that gap and that would look a lot better um the image I feel like that is the perfect size I mean look at the adorableness of this corgi I've affectionately called this canvas uh, zero um, because that corgi reminds me of a Mackenzie dragon wing diamonds if you haven't subscribed to her you should um, but uh, this reminds me of her uh, corgi zero her puppy he's uh, 
pretty close to a year old, close to a year old now, but he's adorable. And this reminds me of zero. Um, but definitely an improvement on this one. Um, definitely there's still some gapping, but I know talking to Crimson, I gave her some feedback on it and she said that they have, she has been working with this manufacturer to tighten the grid a little bit more on the squares to try to reduce some of this gapping. Uh, and that's because she's getting, been getting feedback and trying to work on it. So this was before, um, the, talking to the manufacturer about tightening that grid down because she has a different manufacturer for her um the cheap kits like this or the like the basic um basic economy line kits versus the upgraded version of this kit that you get in like the luxury version that comes from a different manufacturer so there's two different manufacturers and I have yet to try the upgraded ones with that manufacturer and then the third kit that I finished is also from Fallon Gems and this is Plant Haven. It's also a 20 by 20. This one has 24 colors. I started it on the 13th of June, finished it on the 14th of June. And this one with all of the different color changes, uh, you can see the only place that you really see any of the gapping is only in this big block of color blocking right here where we have that uh, 5200 in the window. Otherwise, like you really don't notice any gapping at all. Like down into here, there's like very, very small spots and that's mostly because of my placement. But this one... Uh, definitely with all of those color changes looked even better than this one did right there. Uh, and I thought this one was adorable with uh, the plants uh, hanging in the windows uh, right through there. So super cute for this one, the Plant Haven. Um, and again, much improved from these over the uh, the three previous ones that I did, which had all been uh, with the... Um, double-sided adhesive. Uh, so these ones being poured glue were a definite improvement and I'm really pleased with how those three turned out, much happier with those. So those are the three mini kits that I did. And then the other uh, non like regularly scheduled programming that I did was my one paint gem finish. So we're gonna go over that. So my paint gem finish that I did was the Mandala series. So the Mandala series had 12 canvases. Uh, so we're gonna go over those and then we'll break into all these that you're getting a sneak peek of. And I was so looking forward to this Mandala set. Like so, so, so looking forward to it. Uh, Cause I love all things Mandala. And being able to finish this Mandala set uh, working on it and finishing it. I think I showed you guys the first six in our last uh, video as like a, wear, a work in progress or a whip. Look at how beautiful that is. That is so stunning. Uh, and then I was able to finish uh, all of them, uh, all 12 of them for this month. And they were uh, so incredible, like so much fun to do. And I love how they turned out. I think some of my favorites, I love this one, this one, uh, and this one. Those are like my top three. And then I have some more favorites after that. Like I love these ones here, here, and then they kind of like extend out from there, but like love them all. They were stunning. So these are all roughly like a 10 by 10 uh, poured glue, 30 colors with these. I started them on the 3rd of May, finished them on the 4th of June, and it took me roughly 11 hours and eight minutes to finish all 12 of these paint gems. And this was my 12th paint, paint gem set that I worked on. So I have now completed 12 paint gem sets. Um, and I did not do any other paint gem sets in June. I just did this one set. Um, so uh, that I have yet to actually cut this, cut them, put them in like a booklet. I think I'm going to put these ones in like their own separate book because I love the mandalas so much. I mean, I have mandala tattoos all of, on like in multiple spots on my body. That's how much I love mandalas. So obviously like I loved doing this set and I was really, really, really looking forward to working on this particular paint gem set. Um, no issues with these once in a while I'll have issues with like the adhesive on like one of uh, the paint gems uh, out of a kit, but I had absolutely zero issues with any of these ones, which was wonderful. Um, so that was the that was basically my finish number four, but kind of like I count the mini finishes, those small finishes like that separately. So now we're gonna get into what I consider the actual finishes for the month. So we got the mini and the paint gem sets out of the way. So those first four finishes out of the way. And now we're gonna go into what I consider the, my regular finishes. So finish number one for the month, we have a Princess Mononoke by Jojo's Art. This is from Diamond Art Club. I started this one on the 31st of May and I finished it on the 1st of June. It took me 11 hours and 45 minutes and I worked on this at the Crafters Paradise Retreat. Um, it is a square drill, square drill canvas with 38 colors and there were no special drills in it. 
Uh, it is one of the older Diamond Art Clubs because, again, it has no specials in it. Uh, whereas there are multiple spots in here that could have used some additional bling. But I just worked it up as charted. Uh, and Princess Mononoke, if you're not aware, is a uh, Studio Ghibli image. And it is, oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. Like, for this being only a, let's see what it's size, 44 by 32 centimeter canvas. So it's a little one. And it's squares, as you can see. But you can see how stunning this is and to me this is proof that you do not need a 80 by like a 70 by 107 centimeter canvas in order to get the this level of detail like to me this looks completely fine um in this basically 40 by 30 size and I'm perfectly content with this size for this image like it looks completely fine I'm I love it like the detail is there like the detail and the shading and everything in this wolf is completely fine finding the occasional drill that's popping up um like no issues with it yes there's some things that if it was larger you could have more detail in like the hand you could have a little bit more detail on her face but to me this looks great i would love to like go back and potentially like this would look fantastic to have added bling on her the gem on her necklace different areas could have more bling but this was wonderful this is my first finish for the month of june um uh, my 60 fifth finish total and the 18th finish of the year um that was this one right here princess mononoke from diamond art club uh stunning little kit i loved working on it it was so much fun and i just like breezed right through it it was such a quick finish uh so that was princess mononoke next up we have da -da 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 -da. gotta put everything in order Next up, we have Super Dragon. So Super Dragon is from the artist Tori Negay Art, and that comes to us from Enablers Outpost, and this is a 50 by 110 uh, centimeter canvas. It is square drills, 44 colors. It came with two ABs, uh, and there are three and two colors that are considered, I think, like the UV or the glow-in-the-dark drills. Um, I don't didn't even bother trying to check it out as like a uv or anything like that but this is uh super dragon i'm not going to focus on trying to get all of super dragon in here because i do have an in-depth post review of super dragon so you can check out the full length of this kit because it is so massive uh you can check out the full length of it on that post review video um uh, because i mean it is a 50 by 110 it is massive it's not going to fit on my desk but this was a wonder to work on i started on the 5th of february for my uh my lunar new year event and i finished it on the 5th of june so it did take me february march april may june four months to finish it but when you actually look at what amount of time i actually spent on it i did not work on it the entire time there was like i worked on it and did it i had it worked on it in 10 sections uh i had like in february i think i did two sections in february i don't think i touched it at all in march I did one section in April. Uh, I did the next, so that was three. I did the section four, five, six, seven, eight. Like I did uh, in section nine in May. And then I had this one last section to finish for June. So realistically for the month of June, all I did was this last section right up here. That's all I did for the month of June. Um, but this one took me 58 hours and 37 minutes. So it did take me a hot minute to do it, but I, I loved working on it. It was fantastic. It was my second finish for June, my 66th finish total, and my 19th finish of the year. The squares were super easy to work with. Uh, I didn't have any issues with the squares. Um, no issues with like really trying to kind of force the squares in. Sometimes I struggle with the, well, I always struggle with the new Diamond Art Club squares. They drive me bonkers. I don't enjoy them. There were some, some, some clumpy drills where the two drills stick together, which was mostly in this blue here. And then this blue here, those were the two primary culprits. There were a couple other colors that were like that, but those were the two colors that I basically 
ran out of unclumpy drills. So when I was working on the last section, it was only when I got to this last section, I had to actually take a drill grinder and separate those two colors. Uh, so that was the one thing that I did have to do. Um, but if you do purchase this canvas, you're going to get it from their new supplier because they are in the process of recharting it, which I'm looking forward to seeing somebody work on it with it recharted because it was beautiful as is, but it's going to be even more incredible from their new supplier uh, because I just worked on a canvas from the new supplier with the hand charting and it is like mm, chef's kiss, beautiful. Um, there was some very minor gapping in the 939, but I mean, looking at it from here, you would never notice it. It's only if there's like a light pad behind it and you're looking at it right up close that you see it. There was no gapping at all in these lighter colors, which was phenomenal and absolutely gorgeous. So that is Super Dragon. Uh, again, you can go look at the, um, <laughs> the review video for that. Uh, I'm going to roll Super Dragon up because Super Dragon is so massive. Uh, I have Super Dragon in um, his own uh, uh, tube because he doesn't fit anywhere else. He's so massive. But that is Super Dragon. Like phenomenal, phenomenal painting uh, for Super Dragon. And next up, we have my first custom canvas that I have worked on. This is a Fierce Foo. I am the artist, so Fierce Foo by Alyssa Mank. And I had this custom done through Jaded Gem Shop. And this is a 45 by 60 port glue full drill canvas. Uh, I am going to be doing a, I have a, a post review. I just haven't posted the post review yet. I've ran out of time and days and all of that. There are 45 colors in this, no specials. I felt like this particular image did not need the specials because I would have wanted the special drills I like to have on this, would have been on the subject. I didn't feel like the background needed blinged up with how many reds and oranges there are in the temple in the background. So I didn't want to add any extra bling to uh, the food dog in the front in the foreground so there is no uh spe there are no specials on this i felt like this is an image that did not call for it or need it but it looks stunning without any specials and uh, uh, fierce foo is just beyond gorgeous i mean look at this look at the detail on this and for the size it ended up being like perfect this is rounds round drill canvas um, I started it on the 1st of June, finished it on the 9th of June, and it only took me 22 hours and 42 minutes, which is really not bad at all. And this looks like it's all one color, but this is not just one solid color. There are multiple colors in here. And look at how sparkly these drills are. There are actual patches of color blocking in here, though. So there are a couple colors here. There's some color blocking over here, some little patches of color blocking, which was, like, wonderful for this being a jaded gem shop with all of the confetti, because this was sheer confetti here sheer confetti like even this was a lot of confetti here with all of these different shades of orange because there's so many shades of orange and red right here and then this is all sheer confetti up at the top uh, and that's what gives it like the depth and even these blues pure confetti right there so much confetti right there um but again this is part of what makes it look so absolutely uh, stunning and this is like the original art image right there that's what the photo looks like and like look at how close like look at how perfect this looks um, this was my third finish of the month uh, of June my 20th finish of the year and my 67th finish total uh, my comments for fierce foo um, this was an absolute dream the render came out absolutely perfect the confetti and color blocking combination really worked and was perfect for this image and for this stunning uh there are a couple symbols that i noticed that's kind of like a continuous thing with jada gem shop rounds uh i haven't really noticed an issue with them on the squares it just seems to be common with the rounds there were a couple uh symbols that i had to turn off the light pad to be able to see them which it seems to be normal for me in how i work with a jaded gem shop canvas um and that was just something that uh it's very easy i work up all of the colors except for those two symbols turn off the light pad and then i can see them perfectly or if I have an overhead light shining on my um, my easel and the canvas while I'm working and I have a light pad behind it, then I have no issues. But if there's only a light pad shining from behind and no light from the front, then I do have a little bit of an issue seeing a couple of those colors, a couple of those symbols, um, if it's only backlit with the light pad. But if there's any lighting coming directly from the front, then there's no problem. But I don't normally work with a light coming from the front. I only work with my light pad from the back. Uh, unless I'm doing like a whip and chat and then I'm lighting from the front too, then there's, then that's when I kind of have, um, I have to turn like a light on to be able to see when I'm doing like a couple colors on this. Uh, and that was just a couple of the symbols in this here. 
uh, and I'm trying to remember which symbols it was off the top of my head. I can't remember. It may have been like this starburst, uh, the arrow, and maybe, I think it's mostly the starburst and the arrow, maybe this star as well. But there was only a handful, like maybe two or three symbols. Usually the lighter ones with the, like the white symbol and then the background but stunning, absolutely loved everything about Fierce Foo. And I think this is one that I actually want to um, potentially frame and hang because I loved this piece so much. And it's, I feel like this is a perfect size to be able to hang. And like, just look at the shimmer of the drills on this with it being in the round like that, it's absolutely stunning. So that's Fierce Foo. Uh, and next up, we have a small one. This was my summer with the master's canvas that I did. I know it's a little baby kit. But, you know, got it. you got to do the small ones every now and again. Uh, so my Summer with the Masters kit, I did um, a composition with blue, uh, red, yellow, and black by um, Mondrian. Uh, and there is some gapping, but I mean, look at how big of an area of just like sheer white 5200 it is. This one I did not go back through, and I'm not a very good like placer when it comes to filling in some of those gaps. Like if I had placed better... I'd get rid of some of that gapping because I did much better when it came to these smaller areas of color blocking where you don't see the same degree of gapping. So this would look much better if I was a better placer. Um, there are five colors in this. It is a 20 by 20 uh, poured glue, squares, full drill, no ABs, just the five colors, diamond artisan shop. That's where it comes from. So really good quality canvas. I love this size. This one I started on the 14th of June, finished it on the 14th of June, and because it is like literally sheer color blocking, this one only took me an hour and 59 minutes to do. Uh, I do need to go back through and add some mica powder to the white to kind of fill in some of these gaps, and that will help kind of fill it in uh, and just make that area look better. This one was, even though it's the same size as those minis, uh, I did already have this one logged into my uh, log book and I, I for some reason I had this one not counted as well in the reg the minis even though it's the same size so this one is counted as a regular finish don't ask me why I don't know my brain just put this one as a non-mini I don't know why so this was my fourth finish for the month of June my 21st finish for the year and my 68th finish total uh like I said some gaps in the white uh and I need to do the mica uh method uh for this to fill that in a little bit um, cause that will help with some of the gapping that you see from a distance. Not bad when you look up close, still not bad at all. There's just some areas that, uh, I feel like the gapping is a little bit more, uh, over here looks completely fine. There's just the gaps in this area that I want to fill in. Um, just because that's me and I, it would bother me if I don't. And then next up is a stunning image that I also have a post review for. So this lovely image you may have seen on my channel before, uh, once in the post review, but two, I have already finished the 1.0 version of this kit. So this is the image of My Sword by the artist Indie Creates, and this comes to us from Enablers Outpost. Uh, and this is a 65 by 50 poured glue, full drill, 39 colors, rounds, uh, no ABs, but it does come with five glimmer or fairy dust, depending on how you want to think of it. Enablers post Outpost calls them glimmer drills. Um, and this one was, I started on the 14th of June and finished it on the 20th of June. And it took me 22 hours and 57 minutes to finish this, which was significantly shorter than the same time, than the same uh, canvas in the 1.0 version, which was the computer generated. This version right here is the hand charted version. Uh, and you can see so much more detail in this one. And I have like the very detailed like post review that you guys can go on and watch because I'm in love with the detail in her hands, hands, like this detailing in the ribbon. It is just absolutely stunning. Like her face and the eye makeup, oh, absolutely stunning. I love that you can see the swooshes of the background, like the paint swooshes there, the detailing over on the side, the depth of color on this, everything about it is just hands down so much more stunning than the first version and I am so so happy with the render and I'm like so ecstatic that Elizabeth is now doing these hand rendered uh, images. I'm like this is super exciting and I think it's phenomenal that we're now getting these hand rendered images from uh, Enablers Outpost. It is and not it's it's fantastic and they're absolutely beautiful. Um, 
I'm not going to go more in depth on this just because if you want to know those details, you can watch the post review of it. But I mean, look at how beautiful she is. She's just so gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm like trying to get rid of that glare. So I'm trying to get rid of that glare. Eh. We'll just put that there anyways. Uh, trying to move that light around. Uh, but this one, again, uh, let's see. Let's go to the back of my paper so I can go over my details. So this one was my fifth finish of June, my 22nd finish of the year, and my 69th finish of all time. Uh, and I did say that they, I had the normal amount of trash gerals, no issues. There was, there were definitely patches of color blocking, which I love. That's my happy place. Definitely spots of confetti and then the color blocking as well. So it was a good combination and I commented amazing render quality. Everything was amazing on this image. So that was my comments for that one. It was absolutely stunning. She was a dream to work on. So much fun. So that was my sword. Next up, we've got my last three finishes. So as we come over here, we have Tiny Dumbledore. So Tiny Dumbledore, he was so cute. Look at this cuteness right there, Tiny Dumbledore. Uh, so Tiny Dumbledore is a 32.8 by 32.8, port glue, full drill, 14 colors, uh, in round drills, which includes two ABs. Uh, this was from Diamond Art Club. Uh, I started him on the 25th of June, finished him on the 26th of June. So this is the first of my uh, kits that I worked on for the uh, Great Lakes Escape Retreat that I just got back from. Uh, so this is the first one of my, uh, my kits that I did there. I actually got so much diamond painting done while I was at the retreat, like a shocking amount. And that was despite getting up and walking around and chatting with people. I'd work for an hour or two, get up and make my loop, chatting with people, sit back down and diamond paint again. And I think it was just because I had so much time, like dedicated time to actually like craft and diamond paint. So I got so much diamond painting done. It was ridiculous how much diamond painting I got done. But this is our uh, tiny Dumbledore. Uh, he took me five hours and 24 minutes to do, which is kind of average for about the same amount of time it took me to do the first uh, tiny, the first two tinies uh, in the series this because this is the third one that I've finished. This was my sixth finish uh, for the month of June, my 23rd finish for the year, and my 70th finish total. Uh, so that is our tiny Dumbledore. He's so cute. And I love the AB placement in this in his uh, robes. So most of the ABs are in his robes. I love that placement. And then you also have the ABs up in these star flashes. Uh, but super, super cute. And then you got like the bags underneath his eyes to make him look old and wizened. But that is our tiny Dumbledore. He's so cute. And now my, my book is like being weird on me. So I got to fix that because that's going to bother me. Ugh. I need to swap these out and put like larger rings in here. Because I'm like running out of... Like, why is that being weird right there? Hmm, hmm, hmm. At some point, a few pages back, I've like, huh. Anyways, that was Tiny Dumbledore. And now, next up, we have our Tiny Hermione. Uh, and Tiny Hermione, because uh, I brought kids that would be quick and easy to do, um, and lots of color blocking, so that way I didn't have to focus. I could be chatting with people while I worked on them. And I love the sparkle on these kits. So Tiny Hermione was also a 32.8 by 32.8. I love that they made all of these tiny Harry Potter kits in the same dimensions. I love that. And then the same drill shape. Port glue, full drill, eight colors, rounds, one AB and one fairy dust charted for this. Um, and this one, uh, I started on the 26th of June, finished on the 26th of June. And because she had fewer colors, uh, I, I finished her in four hours and 58 minutes. So Tiny Hermione was actually a gift to me from Nancy, uh, who I had met at the Crafter's Paradise Retreat. Uh, we were chatting and she was like, found out uh, about uh, the Tiny Harry Potter series. Uh, and she said she had two of these and wanted to know if I wanted uh, the Tiny Hermione. And I was like, oh, that would be absolutely awesome. So she sent me Tiny Hermione. Uh, so thank huge thank you to Nancy for that. And I worked on uh, Tiny Hermione at this retreat, Great Lakes Escape Retreat. She was my seventh finish for the month of June, my 24th finish for the year, and my 71st finish of all time. And I did add, I forgot to put the color, I said cosmic effects in Milky Way, that's the color. 
Milky Way. That was the color that I added. So she had all of these little spots that you can kind of see in here. I'll bring her up so you can see. Because uh, her ABs that she had was this beautiful pink in her dress. And then she had all of these like four spots, these little that were supposed to be fairy dust. But all of these like four spots that were like all throughout the canvas, there's like 16 of them. That was like, that would be perfect for like a, I was going to use a quad cube, but I didn't have any quad cubes. So um, at the vendor booth, I went upstairs and bought what they had that was going to be closest color wise. And they were these um, Cosmic Effects Milky Way. Um, so the Milky Way ones, they look purple or kind of like blue depending on what way you turn it with the light so sometimes you look at them and they're purple and let me see if it shows better if I turn the overhead light on yeah see how I turn on that light and now you're seeing some of that blue kind of bluish green come through right there whereas if I turn it a different way uh it's gonna like the purple and it almost blends in so I wanted them I thought those would be perfect considering the original color of the fairy dust is like this tealish bluish color there and I thought that really captured and picked it up when we look at it right there. And then if you angle it a different way, it's gonna give it a purple hue. Um, but if you catch it that way, purple, this way, kind of that blue color. And I thought that was absolutely perfect to give it exactly what I was imagining, but giving it a little bit of the texture and depth depending on how you look. It kind of like gives this blinky blinky look. Because this was the first canvas I saw of the three or of the four now that I've finished that had these like perfect little four spots in the background. So I added that for Tiny Hermione and I thought that was just the perfect little addition for her to give her some little oomph and some sparkle um, for her. And that was the finish number seven. And then I worked on my Pride canvas because uh, I was like, I can't go through June and not do a canvas for Pride Month. Uh, so I had, I brought this one to do and I was really hoping that I would be able to finish it for the month, which I did. I was very pleased that I was able to finish it. So this is Lamy Corn by Sheena Pike. Uh, this is one of the older kids and it is just the cute. I have this thing for llamas. I love them. Um, this is a 41 by 41 square drill canvas poured glue. Uh, I thought it was a partial initially. Uh, and then when I pulled it out, I was like, oh, that's actually a full drill. So I need to change that in my log book to full drill. So it's a full drill. There are 35 colors in here. I have 33 marked squares. It came with two ABs. Uh, I started it on the 26th of June and finished it on the 28th of June. So perfectly just in time for the end of, uh, you know, the end of June for Pride Month. And this one took me nine hours and 57 minutes. So I was like, I, it just flew. And of course, part of that is because, I mean, look at how much of this background is just like just straight 5200 there was so much 5200 in it um the squares were perfect i loved this grid like for the fact that this is literally all 5200 you can look at it and there's like literally very little to no gapping and that's with me not being a perfect placer by any means and i'm like i wish this was the grid that we still had for squares because I didn't have to fight with the squares to get them down and this is like literally a canvas of light colors and when you look at it, you don't see all, all like gapping anywhere really. Uh, there's one or two squares that I need to pop down because I didn't, haven't had a chance to roll this. And it's been like, I just flew back from <laughs> tech from Ohio with it jammed into my suitcase. I love the colors. There's a couple ABs. Um, there's our blue uh, AB there. And then what's our, and our other AB is this pink AB that we have right up in here. Um, but that, or green AB, not blue. So we have a green AB here and a green AB here. And then our pink AB uh, in these other little accent marks. She is the cutest little Lamy Corn ever. I love her and I am so happy that I was able to get this on a D stash. And I didn't even find, like some people would have been driven crazy by the amount of color blocking that they have to do back here. I had no issues with it. I loved it. And like, this is the grid style. Like, I love this grid. I wish more of them were this grid. Um, I said perfect squares, loved the grid. The gapping, there was like, was non-existent really. I had no issues with any gapping or anything like that. I loved how there were so many different colors in our llama to give you the depth in the shading and like the texture of the llama's hair, the llama's fur, all of that. But this is my eighth finish for the month of June, 25th finish for the year, and my 72nd finish total. So all together we had eight plus the three mini slash 
mini kits and the one paint gem. So 12 finishes total. That's what I got done for the, um, the month of June. So pretty crazy how much I actually got done in June. I'm pretty impressed by that and shocked that I got so much done. But I mean, I love this. This is one of like Fierce Foo is my favorite finish of the month, but I just, I just love this one. I've been really looking forward to doing this one, kind of saving it. It was kind of one of my rainy day kits because I was like, I didn't want to work on it, but I wanted to work on it, but I didn't want to work on it because I didn't want it to be done. And I'm like, I'm so sad that this kit is done, but I'm like, oh, but I love it so much. It's so adorable. Like, I love everything about it. So cute. And if this is a kit that you have in your, uh, in your hoard and you've been avoiding working on it because you're intimidated by the color blocking, do it. If you're somebody who despises color blocking, cut your canvas, trim it. So it's like you take that much of it off and you'll cut a huge section of color blocking off and you'll still have the adorableness of the llama, but then you're cutting a huge section of color blocking off. And then you've got just like this cuteness factor of this, because that still looks absolutely adorable to have something like that with it cut shorter and you still have the color of everything, but you can cut some of that color blocking off if you will have this and don't want to have that all of the white but I loved it. And do you see this washi tape that I used? The hula hooping uh, lami corns, or well, unicorns, not lami corns, the hula hooping unicorns. I thought that was perfect. So that was lami corn, loved it. Now we're gonna talk about my whips. So I have a handful of whips going on. I have five whips right now. Uh, so the first whip that I have, which is so close to being done, I was really hoping to finish this whip before I rolled into the new year or well in the new year, the new month. I was really hoping to finish this one before rolling into the new month, but I did not finish this one in time quite. I got so close, uh, but then it was like the day that I pack, I always underestimate how long it takes to pack. So if I hadn't had to pack, I would have finished this on Wednesday before leaving. But this is Cloud Kitty by Angeline Arts. Uh, and this is from Swartz Designs by Abigail Marie. And this, I'm going to move these because these are bothering me. Um, so this came in the Valentine's Advent Box. Um, there are it, it, a round drill canvas, 60 by 60, 42 colors, and it came with four ABs, but we added an additional six ABs on top of those four ABs. And we added a metallic drill, which you see right here. Um, so it was like a metallic drill or a sparkler. I can't remember which. It was like a metallic one, basically. Um, I started this one on the 22nd of June and I just have one section left. Uh, that's all I have. The rest of the details you'll find later. So you can see this is where we're at. We have all of this done. We just have that one section up at the top left to go and this one will be finished. So I only have like a day or so left of working on it to finish out that section. And I love, look at all of these ABs that we have down here in this board. Just phenomenal. So many ABs scattered throughout. Like the sash is all ABs right through here. Cloud Kitty is adorable. Uh, and it is super cute. This is my Valentine's kit. I wanted to work it up because I've had this thing kitted up and hanging from the back of my door since February. I just haven't had a chance to work on it because I keep working on other kits instead. And I'm like, no, it's kitted up. I need to work on it and finish it. So that's why I'm working on a Valentine's kit in June. And now I'll roll it over into July to finish this section. And then this is like the piddly amount that I got done during my last whip and chat. The one thing that I do not like about this kit and the thing that's driving me bonkers is basically almost the entire kit is, as you can see here, like checkerboarding. Like if we look at this right there, you can see that's all just like sheer checkerboarding color wise. I'm a color blocking junkie. I do not like how much checkerboarding it is. I'll have some, I'll have color blocking in the face. There's a little swath of color blocking there, a little swath of there, and a little bit right here in this section of the cloud. The rest of this section is checkerboarding. The Almost the entirety of this canvas has been sheer checkerboarding. This entire bottom, all of these oranges, sheer checkerboarding the entirety of this bottom section here minus that little swath of cloud and cloud. But the rest of that, all of that orange, pure checkerboarding. That's my definition of like hell. That's basically single placing. That's the part that I have not been enjoying on this canvas. But so it's kind of one of those things where I'm so ready to be done because I'm over the checkerboarding. But that is whip number one. And that's the first one that I want to finish. Uh, my second whip is the other one on my canvas number four that I work, brought with me for the retreat. 
canvas number four for the retreat. This is Ohana. And as you can see, I got halfway through this kit and it is the cutest kit ever. I'm going to bring this up a little bit since we're like so close. Uh, and this one is Ohana. It is by the artist Leah Barazzi and the company is Bella Art Diamonds. This is so cute. I got this one in rounds. This one you could pick rounds or squares. I got it in rounds. It is a 40 by 50, 36 colors uh, with uh, rounds and it came with three ABs. I started this one on the 28th of June and basically only worked on it on the 28th of June because I was traveling on the 20, uh, I think I worked on it on the, no, I worked, started on the 28th into the 29th. I started it like really late on the 28th, I think, I don't know, whatever day that was. Um, maybe I started on the 29th, I don't remember, but I started it on Saturday and worked on it on Saturday uh, and then I traveled on Sunday. So really, I think I traveled, started on the 20th, but uh, this is Ohana and it is so cute. This eye is stunning. The texture and the colors on this, phenomenal. I love the white AB placement all around this hibiscus that you see right here. The AB doesn't come through really well depending on how you're looking at it, but there's a line of AB all around here and all around here. And then there's two shades of red in the flowers right there uh, with the flower not being quite open. But the AB placement, you can see some ABs there in the closed hibiscus up top. Uh, and then along the border of the hibiscus as we come down, it is stunning. And then the background is not, not sheer color blocking. There's patches of color blocking that you can do, but you have to place all the other colors first. And it is just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I am loving this. I think this is a stunning image and I am so excited to finish it and work on this little turtle some more because uh, it is just gorgeous. But that is Ohana, uh, very high quality drills, very high quality canvas. And this is from their first run. Uh, and I just can't wait to finish out this kit. And it's the perfect size. I love the small size of this. I love the fact that I can work it up so quickly. And I am halfway done with that whip. So that's whip number two. Uh, and that will definitely get done this month. So I have two whips that'll totally get finished this month. Next up, we have this little tiny one. Uh, so this kit is, uh, I don't know the artist for this one, but this is one of the kits that we got in our goodie bag for uh, free. Uh, at the retreat uh, from Great Lakes Escape. And this comes to us from Crystal Canvas Art Designs. This is actually my first kit, second kit from Crystal Canvas Art Designs, but this is the first one I've actually worked on. So I had finished the first two sections uh, of uh, Ohana and I still had time uh, to kill before the craft room closed on Saturday night. And I had already packed up my bag and everything. And I was like, I wanted to continue diamond painting, but I was like, I didn't want to start another section of Ohana. And I knew I wouldn't be able to finish a section if I did start Ohana. So I was like, I wanted to do something that I knew I could kind of like finish a section, finish an area of. So I pulled out this little one and I finished the back, the, the white, these checker marks right here. I finished that whole section of like this bottom half of the background. So this is a full crystal canvas and this will be my first full crystal canvas it's like a little a little baby phoenix it's a 30 by 30 36 colors rounds all rhinestone crystal canvas I started on the 29th of June and basically yeah just worked on it on the 29th of June that's all I did was 29th of June um I'd have to look and see did I work do, do I do did I do it just on the 29th I have to look exactly on what days I worked on it but because it basically worked on it on Saturday yeah I started on the Saturday night and that was it just worked on it for a couple hours on Saturday and got that whole section done so a pretty good amount that I got done just in one sitting so I will also finish this this month uh, but that's a little cutie pie that I was working on uh, and as you can see everything is a crystal on this one so that is whip number three and those three whips will get done this month and then I and since they're all partially finished uh, I'll be able to start and work on something else so I'm excited for that that is whip three. And then we're gonna go into whip number four, my year long whips, which you guys are probably like, really, again, we get to see this again. We're so sick of seeing this. But whip number four is my year long temperature style for whip four and five. So you guys will see this over and over and over again, but you at least can see the progress. So this is how much I got done on it before the end of, um, before I left for the retreat. Uh, I did not get finished past this section. So I have up to here. Uh, and no more than that. Uh, so we still have 
the I think that was through day 20 what one two three six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty so 20 days on this one and that's the 21st so I got 21 days done but black through 20 days uh, and that's for the month of June and you can see how hot the month of June has been considering every single day for the month of June has been either uh, 100 or 110 I think we had one day that was down into like the 90s or something like that um but I think maybe I'd have to pull everything back out but you can see how we rolled into May and we get up basically May was 90s and hundreds uh and then June rolled into hundreds with a handful of days in the 110s that's what this really bright pink here is that's 110s everything else has been like hundreds for the month of June so crazy hot uh that's year-long sal cross stitch conversion stitch along number one um and this is my spooky library potion bottle sal um which has 60 colors and i cruising along on that and then my other one and my last whip that i've actively got going is my temperature dragon uh stitch along and this is so this one right here we're doing daily highs on this temperature uh project and then for this one the temperature dragon we are doing daily lows because I want to do something a little bit different. So this one has a totally different color palette and it's daily lows. And what's interesting about this one is the entire canvas is in basically fairy dust drills. I don't know if it comes through very well, but there we go. From that angle, you can kind of see. So the only thing that's not fairy dust is the gray and then the black uh, drills. I think the whites are also, yeah, the grays. Uh, so the 413 and the 310, those are the only ones that are not a fairy dust in this canvas. So I've got January. So this right here is January. This right here is February. This is March, April. Then we have May and then we have June. And again, through June, you can see I've got through the 20th of June done, but I have not finished the rest of June um, before I left. I was, if I had time I was going to but I did not finish the last little bit of June so I just have to finish the last little bit of this spike right through here uh, on our little temperature dragon uh, and then I can start into July now that we are into July we will start our spiky over here uh, and that'll be our July spike and this will be the, like the last one is like December is down here so that'll be July and then we roll into uh, so that it goes July and then we get in August September and then we have October is that one then November goes right here with the other eye and then December is right down there but that is the agenda for my active whips that I have going uh, and then for what I plan on working on let's go ahead and move these and then we'll go over what I plan on working on so we're gonna look at what I've got in my hoard uh, one of the things that I am actually going to work on, but it has not, oh, it should be arriving by the time I film this, uh, or well, by the time this goes up, this is going up on Wednesday and I'm filming it on Monday. So Tuesday is when my summer mystery kit from Jada Gym Shop is going to be arriving and that I will be working on. Uh, so that's something that I am going to, let me go ahead and actually, actually put my non-received uh so the summer mystery we are going to put as a uh put it as a in the started category even though it has not actually arrived yet we're going to put it in the started category uh and then we're going to come over here to my not started so that's something that's going to go in the started category uh i do need to do a, i want to work on a paint gem this month uh and i do my paint gems in order so next up uh, so my paint gems, as you can see, are right here. These are my outstanding paint gems. I do want to work on a paint gem. Uh, so next up on the paint gem series, we have birds. So I'm going to put those in the... I changed it to start it over here. I don't put a date until I actively start it. But we're going to put those on the started category. So we're going to move a paint gem over. I would also like to work on one of the uh, Diamond Art Club... Um, mini kits as well uh, so I'm gonna pick the first one that they came out with which is the diner food uh, so we're also gonna put that uh, in the started category so some mini small things um, so we'll move that over and then I'm gonna look at these things and 
and it, I don't really have anything specific that I've thought about as far as these canvases. So we've got the minis and then oh, we're going to kind of look through and see if there's anything that's screaming at me that I must work on this month. I don't have any uh, events or anything like that planned. So it's really like, what do I want to work on? And I'm trying to work on some of the older stuff. It would be nice to, I, I actually really should work on my two um, retreat canvases and get those done so I'm not like having them linger forever and ever. So I'm going to throw those both into my, um, this is just me kind of plotting and planning things. And they're, they're not super big. So I'm going to do that one in the Great Lakes retreat one because it's like I don't want to wait forever to work on those. Um, so we're going to put those in the started category uh, as well. The two canvases that came with, um, that I got for free, or the basically that were specific for the themed ones for the retreat, because I would like to finish those before we get too far out from the retreats. And then I'm like, from there, I'll probably see how it goes with the finishes and then see how it goes working on those before I decide anything else. But I'm trying to kind of go through some of my older kits first before I start some of like these new ones. And I'm also trying to pick things that are not, um, that don't necessarily like fit and jive as well with like my theme of how I, of like my style as much. So things like Ar Arctic Fox isn't necessarily as much my style. So that would be something that I would want to work on sooner rather than later to get that knocked out. And different things like that that I feel like are not as much, that are, don't fit into my my like art aesthetic as much. I want to get those worked on sooner rather than later to save it so I've got it like dwindled down to like my true aesthetic. But I'll usually what I'll do, I'll like kind of like go through and I'll say, okay, which one do I want to do? I've been dying to do this one right here, this uh, evening voyage. I really want to work on that one from Leisure Arts. It's so beautiful. Uh, and that's something that like, I'm trying to go through some of these kits that I've unboxed and done unboxings for. I want to work on them and kind of get them done. I know there's, um, I haven't even worked on any of the Oraloas that I have. Like this one right here, I believe is one that, no, not that one. There was one of the Oraloas that I did a, uh, unbox. I did it. I unboxed an Oraloa early on, but I haven't even had a chance to work on it yet. And I think it was, it was one of those two up there, I believe, but I haven't even had a chance to work on it yet. And I'm like, I need to, I haven't even worked on an Oraloa. So I do need to work on an Oraloa. Uh, so let me go ahead and we're going to go to uh, Oraloa as a shop and see which ones I have from Oraloa and see, okay, it's, it is, I believe it is that one. No, it's this one with the trees. Yes, it's her. Uh, cause this is the one that I've unboxed, but I haven't even had a chance to work on her. That one right there. I unboxed her, but I haven't even worked on her. Um, so that's something that I do want to put higher priority wise. So I'm going to put her in the started category. The other one that I have, I think it's, and now we're going to look at my we're going to clear that and go over to start it and see all I've thrown up here, which I have a lot of stuff here because uh, I already have the Storm God, which I want to work on. That's going to be a square that I work on. Um, so Ohana, which I'm going to finish, uh, Cloud Kitty, uh, which will be the first, like Cloud Kitty, Ohana, and uh, the Phoenix one, which those three, Ohana, Cloud Kitty, and the Phoenix will be the first three that I finish. And then I've got all of these other ones that I'm working on, like my Temperature Dragon and my Spooky Library Sal, both are ones that are not going to be finishes, so you can ignore those two. But the rest, as you can see, Storm God, that may be one that takes me a couple months to do because it's a big square. Uh, that is a 60 by 83 square, so it's a big square, so that one I'll work on slowly. Uh, and especially since it's a square, so that's one that I want to take my time on. Uh, but these three will finish quickly. So that's only three. These are two little things where they don't take me, they won't take me very long to do. So those will be things that it's like, you know, you work on one in the evening or one like every other day kind of a thing. And they will not take much time at all. 
So I don't really count those. And if it takes me a little bit longer to go through the birds, that's no big deal. So really that's only one, two, uh, three. And those, that'll be like two days to finish that, a day to finish that. So that's three days, a day to finish that. That's four days. Like I'm not even looking at much time there. That's like a literally by the end of the week, I would have those ones done. Um, and then that's a mystery kit, which I'll do like a section. I'll section it out and do like a section every day or so for that one. Um, so really I've got one, two, three, four things that I've kind of picked out. So we'll go with this and see how it goes. Um, I may add more to this. I may subtract from this. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's always interesting to see what I've planned for the month and what my plans change for. But I like to throw them into the started category like this to kind of see this is what I'm thinking. And then if the plan changes, then I take some things out. I change it back to that received, not started and go from there. But I will be working for sure on this and I will for sure be finishing these three canvases. Uh, and I definitely will be working on the Storm God because this is the other one that I've had kitted up since February because I was going to be working on the Storm God for my event and then I ended up uh, back in February and then I ended up not even laying a single drill down on this canvas. So the, again, Storm God has been kitted up since February, but there has been no drill placed. Uh, and there is some large areas of color blocking, so that's going to help make parts of this go fast. Um, so I'm really looking forward to being able to work on the Storm God. Uh, really, really looking forward to it. That'll be the last of the ones that have been kitted up for a super long time. And then now that once I finish that, then I'll be able to really kind of start focusing on these other canvases that I have done unboxings for, uh, but have not worked on, which one of them being this Oraloa. Like I have not worked on a single Oraloa and that's driving me bonkers. I'm like, I want to work on an Oraloa. Uh, so that's kind of what my plan is. I also want to start doing uh, some other cross-stitch conversions for fun. Uh, so that's also going to be something that I may throw in a couple small cross-stitch conversion projects as well. So you never know what you're going to see from me at the end of the uh, at the end of the month. So we will see. I do have another trip planned to go visit my brother in Seattle uh, in July. So uh, I may not maybe make nearly as much project progress as I want because I'll be spending a week in Seattle visiting my brother. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, you never know. Always, always up for the fun of seeing what's gonna happen. But anyways, that is all I have for you guys. I will see you guys in the next video. And I can't wait to see and hear what you guys have completed uh, in this month as well. I was really surprised. Some months I finish one canvas. This month I finished a whole lot more than one canvas. So it's always interesting to see, like I'm surprised at how much I got done this month. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.